It is very greasy. Very, very greasy. Just, I, I, I don't know. It just looks even heavier, even greasier. It looks like as if I have been sweating for hours. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, as I promised in my previous video, I'm going to do a review on the last Garnier sunscreen that I got in Germany. And that is the Garnier Sensitive Expert sunscreen. Now this one is my least favorite and that's why I was postponing the video that much. I was supposed to do it instead of the previous video. You will hear my thoughts of course now in this video, but I have to be honest with you guys, it is my least favorite. Hear me out what I have to say and then buy the end of this video figure out if this sunscreen would be well suited maybe for your skin type so who knows okay as always let's first start with the claims i'm going to comment the claims that are written right here so this is sunscreen formulated for sensitive skin and it is hypoallergenic fragrance free yeah it's supposed to be very good for sensitive skin also it says here that this is a light texture non-greasy leave no white cast and yeah, it gives you a high UVB uh, protection, SPF 50, and it also has UVA protection. Now, as always, I do not have a broad spectrum claim on this packaging, but on the website, on Garnier's website, all the sunscreens are broad spectrum. So we are just going to skip on that as always in every Garnier video. I just, I don't know what to say about that. Okay, now let's go through the claims. Are they true or are they misleading? The first claim, non-greasy. Now that one right away, I have to disagree with because this is actually a very good greasy formulation and it feels as if I'm applying oil straight to my face so that claim non-greasy light texture I have to disagree with that one that one is very misleading moving on leaves no white cast that is true and you will see that later on when I show you the demo application then we have SPF 50 and UVA protection yes it does have UV filters that are protected in the both UVB and UVA range I will get to UV filters later on one thing that was confusing me was that on the UK website it says formulated without fragrance and colorants but this german version this one does have one colorant which is not a problem for me but i'm just putting it out there just so you know that the formulations vary from country to country so definitely go check the ingredients on your version of the version of this cream in your country because chances are that formulation is going to be different that's just my experience so far whenever i buy something and i look for the the ingredients online I tend to find the different ingredients all the time so yes the UK version does not have colorants nor fragrance this German version does have one colorant but it also has no fragrance so does it change it that that much well I, I, I don't think so I don't think that one colorant is going to be a problem and that it is going to cause you irritation to the skin so don't worry about that I just wanted to put it out there just so you know to be careful when buying a product just read the label and read the ingredients on the packaging most of the times so when you just google ingredients you're probably going to stumble upon a website from a different country that is going to show you different ingredients that are probably not in the cream that you're holding in front of you so yeah just so you know so overall the claims are okay except for that one that it's lightweight and non-greasy that one i have to disagree with and i do find it a little bit misleading moving on to ingredients now because this is not a sunscreen that is targeted to treat anything unlike Garnier anti-age sunscreen I do have it right here you can check it out that one was uh, treating dark spots and it was an anti-age sunscreen so that one had a little bit more ingredients it had niacinamide phenyl ethyl resorcinol etc but because this one is not meant to treat pretty much anything except to be suitable for sensitive skin this one does not have that much uh, if I can say active ingredients it only has hyaluronic acid and glycerin which are both both humectants and are going to bind water and it also has vitamin E so that is an antioxidant so that's pretty much it this one is formulated to be safe for anyone who has sensitive skin that's it regarding ingredients moving on to UV filters right away okay so we do have seven UV filters in here and I just want to mention the most important ones so we do have Mixoral XL that is a L'Oreal group exclusive agent that is a very good photostable UV filter and it does 
protecting the both UVA and UVB range. So whenever I see mixed sorrels, I, I, I do like when a sunscreen has mixed sorrels because only L'Oreal owned companies can have those. And of course, Garnier is owned by L'Oreal. So yeah, you do have mixed sorrel XL. Also, we do have Tinosaur Best. That is another good UV filter because it is very photostable and it also protects in both UVA and UVB range. Then we have Ethylhaxel Triazon. And this is the best UVB filter that you can find out there right now because this one provides you the highest photostable absorption of all available UV filters today. So that one is great as well. And of course, we do have Able Benzin, which is a great UVA filter, but the problem is that it is not that stable. And the other filters that are in included in this one are here to either solubilize or stabilize benzin, and those are homicylate, ethylhexyl salicylate, and octocrylene. Now these are not that strong but they are most, more so here because of the avobenzin and that's pretty much it what I have to say about the UV filters. UV filters are good. I, I, have, I don't have anything to say against UV filters. So let's move on to controversial ingredients. Now there is only one controversial ingredient and that is alcohol. But if you have been watching my channel then you know what I'm going to say next. Alcohol is not a controversial ingredient for me. Here's the thing about alcohol. There is a thing on the internet going on that people really hate alcohol in their products because they think it's going to be drying on their skin. But actually I do not agree with that. And uh, yeah, alcohol is a solvent, penetration enhancer, creates those lightweight textures. And usually it's included in the sunscreen when you want to create a lighter texture of the sunscreen and make it less thick and greasy. So um, point is, I do not mind alcohol in this product and I don't think it will be a problem for you too, except if you are extremely, extremely sensitive to alcohol, only in that case you can avoid the sunscreen. But if not, then I don't think it will be a problem for you, just so you know. I put it in the controversial ingredient uh, segment of my videos, but I don't find it controversial at all. Okay, now let's move on to the demo application. Let's see how this one applies on the skin. Okay, so let's see how this sunscreen applies. As always, I will first protect my under eye area with the Shaka fluid by La Roche Posay because this is the only sunscreen that is not stinging my eyes. And I'm not sure if the sensitive sunscreen can be applied around the eye area. So just to be sure, I protected my under eye area. And then I'm going in with the sensitive uh, expert sunscreen by Garnier. And I intentionally applied it only to one side of my face because I wanted to show you the difference that it makes and how greasy it actually looks. So as you can see on this side I applied the sunscreen and my skin is looking very greasy in comparison to the side to which I haven't applied anything yet. So uh, yes, I tend to look very greasy when I apply this sunscreen. Anyways, I went ahead and I applied the sunscreen to the other side of my face. And let me just tell you, it's not just that I'm looking greasy, it's the heavy greasy finish that it leaves on the skin. It has a very heavy finish. Like it, it, it feels heavy on the skin. That's the problem that I have with this one. So here's the finished look. This is how I'm looking after the first layer now. I waited for around 15 minutes and then I came back and here's how my face is looking after 15 minutes. It's pretty much still very glowy and still oily looking and when I touch my face the greasiness is left on my fingers so it's definitely very heavy. But let's see how this sunscreen layers. So when I apply the second layer this actually looks and feels even heavier than the first layer. It, it just looks as if I was sweating for five hours straight and I don't know it's, it's not the best sunscreen for layering as you can see yeah I have a lot of uh, residue on my fingers it, it was hard to blend it it was hard to I, I don't know I did not like how this sunscreen was layering and as you can see I'm looking even greasier and trust me it feels even heavier on the skin so yeah now you know why this sunscreen is not my favorite Okay, so let's see how this acts as a makeup base. So I was very skeptical of putting foundation on top of this heavy, greasy layer that I had on my skin. But to my surprise, it actually ended up looking pretty decent. And the only thing that I needed was a lot of face powder. 
I used the RCA Mano Color Setting Powder to set this and I did apply quite a lot but it ended up looking pretty good. So as you can see it is very matte looking and there is no greasy finish and there is no sticky finish when I touch my face so this is completely mattified and here is how my makeup ended up looking. Yeah everything blended properly so I had no problems and you can definitely work around that greasy finish by setting your face properly and that's it. Anyways, that's it. That's how my makeup looks and stay tuned because final verdict is coming up next. Okay, now let me give you my final verdict on this sunscreen. So where do I begin? Okay, so first thing that I don't like is that it is very greasy. Very, very greasy. So that lightweight texture claim is like completely misleading. This is very greasy. But on the other hand, it is very easily spreadable and it does not leave a white cast. So that's okay, I guess, if you don't like a white cast. I mean, nobody, nobody likes a white cast, of course. So that's nice. It does spread out easily, but it does leave a very heavy finish greasy looking skin but of course you can work around that with a heavy setting powder like our CMA no color setting powder you can work around that so that's like not not my fave thing but I guess it can be worked around now layering is kind of weird it layers in a weird way I can't explain it but it just I, I I don't know it just looks even heavier even greasier and it, it looks like as if I have been sweating for hours layering is not my fave thing as well but surprisingly makeup looks okay on top of it so that's like the, the thing that surprised me the most is that when I was applying foundation on top of it it actually looked decent and then once I set it with heavy face powder it looked okay I was really surprised because I never even attempted wearing makeup on top of this until today because I was like there's no way makeup is going to look good on top of this I tried it only for you guys today and to my surprise it looked okay so I can't say anything bad about that so yeah just set your foundation with a lot of face powder and you will be you know decent looking now that I'm looking in the mirror this actually looks pretty good like it looks pretty good it's completely mattified it's okay now how long will this last I'm not sure I am assuming that it will not be very long lasting because all of the sunscreens that I've tried so far they were not long lasting makeup bases if I can say so 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 when I want my makeup to last longer I will usually use a primer yeah if you want a long lasting makeup base then just go for a primer if you have a special occasion or something like that but if you're wearing your everyday makeup then you know I'm okay with using sunscreen as a makeup base and I have to say this one is not my fave I feel like the anti-dry Garnier sunscreen and the anti-age Garnier sunscreens were better because they were were not as greasy as this one but then again I, I cannot say anything bad when you set it like this it does look good so maybe this one needs just a little bit more setting powder but you know overall it is looking decent so yes to my surprise makeup application went really well so moving on my final verdict is that you can get this one if you are extremely sensitive if you have extremely sensitive skin and dry skin because this is as I said very greasy now do not try wearing this in the summer I don't think it will be possible if you don't like the greasy finish of this one I think that the sunscreen that would be better for you would be the anti-dryness sunscreen also by Garnier and I also have a video on it check it out right here now that one also does not have fragrance so it's also suitable for sensitive skin but it's not as heavy as this one it actually gives you a very uh, luminous finish but it's not greasy it's not heavy and greasy it actually absorbs and it leaves your skin just very well moisturized so you can watch the review to see if that one would be better for you I definitely prefer that one instead of this one and the only time of the year when I could see myself using this one would be like in the middle of the winter when it's really cold because of how heavy it is and of course in the winter I do use retinoids so this one is going to be good because it's not going to you know irritate my skin any further in case any irritation from retinoids occurs I can be safe with this one so that is good I have to say that but yeah I really don't like the greasy finish and if you too don't like the greasy finish then go for the anti-dryness sunscreen by Garnier as well I think that one is 
the, the one that I like better than this one. So there you have it. I finally finished the Garnier series. That's the last sunscreen that I had for you and I have no more Garnier sunscreens to review. So finally, let's move on to something else. Anyways, that will be it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. In case you enjoyed, you know what to do, like, share, subscribe, all the good stuff and leave a comment down below if you have tried this sunscreen. What are your thoughts on it? Do you find it greasy or maybe the formulation from another country is not? greasy i'm not sure let me know in the comments down below and i will see you in my next video bye